Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, we're thrilled to be uh, with you today to talk a little bit about integrating geospatial data into the BI picture uh, from the team here at Safe Software. So we're going to jump right into things today. Uh, there's three of us and a few others supporting on the call today. Uh, so uh, my name is Nick Sartori. I'm one of the channel account managers here at Safe Software. I look after our partnerships in the Americas. I also also joined by my colleagues Aaron Lemke, our senior product marketing manager. Hi everybody. And we also have Nathan Hildebrand, our FME technology expert, on the call. Hello. And uh, helping out with questions and answers today, we have Laura and Sienna um, to uh, help us as we go along. So feel free to use the GoToWebinar control panel to chat in your questions throughout the webinar, and uh, we'll do our best to get those answered as we go. So as you know, the world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data, as The Economist published in 2017. And it continues to ring even more true today. Since you all work with data, you understand the value that you and your customers place on data and how meaningful it is to have those data insights specifically in your business intelligence platform, whether that's Power BI, Click, SAP, Tableau, Looker, or any other tool. Geospatial data is no exception, and for most organizations, it's highly underutilized. Forbes reports that 66% of enterprises consider location intelligence to be critical or very important to ongoing revenue growth strategies. So we're going to take a look at how geospatial data can give you key insights and deliver value to the use of your BI platform. Use of geospatial data goes well beyond a lat long point, as many of you probably have uh, started to discover. And uh, you can do much more intelligent uses of location information, and we'll talk about a few of those examples today, including service areas, catchment areas, IoT and GPS, and indoor mapping. So here's our agenda for today. So we've spoken a little bit about the value of integrating geospatial data into your business intelligence platforms. We'll now give you some context about where we're coming from, describing briefly who we are and introducing you to our data integration platform, FME, which specializes in support for spatial data. We'll then show you some of the ways people who use business intelligence platforms are interested in leveraging geospatial data. So hopefully that will give you an understanding of how the power of location can be used in your own work. And then we'll dive into some demos so you can see the scenarios come to life. We'll wrap up by pointing you to some free resources we hope you'll find helpful. All of our training, tutorials, knowledge base, and community are free, and support is included with your licenses of FME. So our goal is to help you get started quickly without any unexpected costs. At the end, we'll have time for some questions. And as I said earlier, feel free to send in your questions throughout. We'll do our best to answer them as we go, and we'll highlight a few at the end. So where do we at SAFE fit in all this? And why are we here today talking about this? Well, we've built an entire business around geospatial data. It started back in 1993 when our co-founders, Don Murray and Dale Lutz, recognized that local companies here in British Columbia, Canada, were encountering a lot of data challenges, especially bringing data between CAD and GIS, or geographic information systems. Instead of becoming service providers like so many others, they chose to build a product that would become the data integration platform that delivers the best support for spatial data worldwide and doesn't require any coding to use it. Data movement is all built in a graphical user interface. Today, over 10,000 organizations use FME to solve their data integration challenges, and we're technology partners with leaders in spatial data and beyond, including Esri, Microsoft, Click, Autodesk, and many others, and the product supports data in more than 450 formats, applications, and systems. We also partner with over 150 organizations worldwide who offer services, if that's something you need support with. So why haven't you heard of us until recently? Because our focus on geospatial data and the data in business intelligence tools traditionally didn't require in-depth use of location information. As the interest and understanding about the value of location data increases, we've increasingly seen interest in having our platform support business intelligence tools. And since we love responding to our customer needs, here we are. We look forward to growing the value and use of location data in this business intelligence space alongside you. So here's a quick glimpse of the data types we've supported over time. And it's interesting to look back and see how the interest in geospatial has grown. 
So we're curious, what systems or applications are you wanting to use as a source for bringing into your BI tools? We're always interested to know how people are wanting to use FME so we can ensure you meet, we meet your needs. So feel free to add into the question box there and go to webinar with what systems or applications are you wanting to use as a source for bringing into your BI tools? I think that will give us some very interesting insight. So still today, our mission at SAFE is to help organizations like yours maximize the value of data no matter where it's stored, what applications you use, or who you need to provide access to. We're completely vendor agnostic, so it doesn't matter to us where your data comes from, or where it goes, or even how many applications you need to bring it to or from. Our goal is to help you. So as the data integration specialist, we focus on moving data. The scenarios you'll see today are going to cover a wide variety of uses, and you may have tools in place for some aspects of this functionality, but where we play is data integration, especially geospatial data. The goal here is to connect data from its various sources without impacting the source at all. Transforming your data to make it work for you, which may involve spatial analysis, filtering, data model transformation, and of course hundreds more use cases uh, using our library of tools we call transformers and then automating these workflows to make them run in response to system events, on a schedule, or on demand, freeing you and your team of the burden of repetitive manual tasks and ensuring that the latest information is always available to those who need it. Excellent. And now over to Aaron. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks for that introduction, Nick. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the use cases we see. Um, so there are a lot of use cases for integrating business data and geospatial data for service areas, for example. Um, so you could provide a morning report to individuals only if action is required on their part, or you could notify operations managers as information becomes available. Um, basically use a specific territory or a unique polygon shape rather than just a lat long location point uh, to take action with your business intelligence tools. So we talked a little bit about a morning report. Um, you know, you could provide that to staff through alerts or text messages or emails, only if action is required or based on a data update or other rules. Um, another example would be telecom coverage areas. What services are offered in what areas and at what level? Providing a dashboard or report based on some input areas of interest to be used by planners for things like site selection of say a new tower going up or sales for customers. You'd also look at sales tax areas. So as a sales rep or manager, I need to know which of my sales fall into which tax area. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of look at some examples where this kind of functionality has been achieved by customers. So let's take a look at Fortis here. So Fortis BC is the largest natural gas utility and the second largest electrical utility in BC. They have a million gas customers and 170,000 electricity customers. I brought their story up with a few people at our booth at Click Connections last month and it really resonated with people. Their GIS team needed a more efficient way to assess the current wildfire threat to their assets and their customers so that their operations managers could take immediate action. And as you can see on the screenshot, we've had the worst fire seasons on record the last two years. That's not sample data. When I took the screenshot, that was live. So it really is a serious problem around here. Um, so what they did is they used FME to automatically integrate active wildfire data from the BC wildfire Fire branch via DataBC, which is BC's open data portal, into their GIS, which in their case was a G small world environment. And the workflow not only sends notifications to operations managers, it also provides drawings, reports, plots, Excel files, and KMZ files. So the operations managers can then provide accurate information to emergency responders to reduce the threat, or if prevention isn't possible, work across teams within the company to efficiently restore services after the area is secured by fire crews. So for example, if an asset that powers a hospital is under threat of wildfire, they can prioritize that and notify emergency responders of that um, risk. Likewise, they can also work with other utilities that share the same corridor to coordinate um, restoration services if a wildfire has come through the area. So by implementing FME, Fortis BC now has an integrated view of wildfires and assets for better decision making and they're saving time gathering that data. Let's take a look at another example here. We can look at CEA. 
So the California Earthquake Authority, or CEA as they're called as well, is a publicly managed and privately funded nonprofit insurance company that offers affordable earthquake coverage for residential properties in California. And they needed to know immediately when an earthquake occurs with the potential to impact their policyholders. So to do this, they use FME to monitor the USGS ShakeMap dataset. It has an email notification service. And when new maps become available, the system immediately identifies if earthquakes in their coverage area are strong enough to pose significant damage. And if so, the workflow extracts shaking intensity data from shapefiles, places it into a report, and emails stakeholders all within minutes of earthquakes being detected. Um, so they use FME Cloud, which Safe Software fully hosts, hosts in an AWS environment, and that provides time and cost savings over maintaining in-house servers. If you want to perform this kind of monitoring with spatial awareness, you can use FME to perform these actions and then deliver to whatever output you'd like. So for example, you could output to your business intelligence platform. So the value with service areas was that you could be notified, perform analysis, and take action on data that's tied to a very specific location area. And likewise, catchment areas can be used to overlap data from multiple sources to make business decisions. So for example, you could overlap demographics and other data over a neighborhood, performing spatial analysis to assess revenue potential in that region, or the region surrounding a physical location, such as a pharmacy, hospital, or retail location, or determining where to place new assets, such as a cell tower. We also see things like walk scores for stores or drive time scores for clinics. This leads into site selection analysis where things like real estate costs, transportation connectivity, and market areas can start to factor in. The Internet of Things is also offering incredible value to data-driven organizations. Sensors and cell phones offer a large amount of data to use already, and much of it is geospatially aware. So employers can see if and when their staff visited customers and provided services, and this data can proactively be used to auto automatically notify customers that, say, a service tech is en route. They're about 20 minutes away. Maybe you get a text message saying that, or even help that tech determine the most effective route to each service stop. Likewise, the same concepts can be used indoors, and we'll get into that in a moment, but first I want to show you an example of vehicle tracking. So the Iowa Department of Transportation is using FME to automate many geospatial data use cases. David Runnels and the rest of the team there have created near real-time FME workflows that deliver map data mashups. They also use it for daily data operations, automating the integration of business and road-related data from multiple disparate sources that can then be used for richer analysis and informed decision-making. The coolest, in my opinion, is this image here, which is used by local TV stations to show locations of snowplows. Now, I don't know if those of you who are listening today are located in a region where you get snow, but let me tell you from personal experience, that's a pretty big deal for those of us who do. Has the snowplow been to my house? Is it coming? And better yet, the live data feed that their FME workflow makes available to the public also shows the plow cam so you can see the road conditions. Of course, not all of you want to share your data with the public, so you may be just sharing data internally, but the workflow behind the system has the same concept. And then over in Amsterdam, Schiphol Airport has the goal of improving operations and passenger experience to become a top airport in Europe. And to achieve this goal, they knew they needed to unify data across departments. So they used FME to integrate asset and infrastructure data and linked it with real-time sensor information, which provides the foundation for a digital twin. Um, and so this pulls in indoor mapping here as well. And we spend about 90% of our time indoors. So while mapping the outdoor world is largely done, people are starting to look at a trend of starting to look at indoor mapping as well as, as important. Um, so passengers, airlines, and staff can also access detailed indoor maps for Shipple via their mobile app, API, Apple Maps, and augmented reality wayfinding. And if we look at some of the examples of what this looks like, um, you can see that yes, on the left, that is a live advertisement for a scarf being shown to a passenger who's navigating the airport on their phone using augmented reality. And I spoke to a colleague who's seen this in action while passing through this airport. It's truly incredible. Can you imagine the possibilities? Imagine the data that can be gathered here, the analysis that can be done, and the marketing potential. The future is already here. So as you can see, there are many ways geospatial data can deliver value to your organization, and we've just scratched the surface today. 
bringing this information into your business intelligence tools like Looker, Power BI, Click, SAP, Tableau, or any other tool enables you to leverage this available resource to get even greater insights with fine-tuned spatial awareness. And you can use whatever tools you want to perform these tasks. And FAB makes it easy to bring all this data together from disparate sources, because we're not interested in what tools, systems, or applications you choose to make the most use of your data. You choose the best fit for purpose applications for your job. But we do care that whatever you do pick, you can effectively work with all the data that's available to you, and that your source system remains untouched in the process and your data maintains its integrity. So we're interested in what tools you wanna to move your data to. Send your answers into the questions panel and we will all, because we always want to ensure that we're supporting the needs of our customers. So go ahead and do that now. Um, and if you want, you can also use FME for spatial analysis and prep. Um, some of what we're going to show you, some of which we're going to show you in the um, demos today. But feel free to use whatever tools you want for that. GIS, data prep tools, BI. Uh, the initial step is connecting data, often in an automated fashion. So this data can be used for this analysis. Behind this, there's always a heavy integration process, and that's where we believe FME is here to make your job that job easier. So now I'm going to hand it over to Nathan, and he's going to guide us through some demos to see how this could be done. Yeah, thanks so much, Aaron. <clears throat> yeah, so it's demo time. All right, so over the next few minutes, I'll introduce you to the basics uh, of our complete software platform, including FME Desktop and FME Server. Uh, that's geared for, for those of you who might be new to FME. After this, I'll run into a few more complex scenario-based demos that'll showcase data integration for BI dashboards, and hopefully that'll provide you with an idea of what's possible when FME is under the hood powering your data flows. We won't be exactly lifting the hood on real customer implementations, but rather exploring some of the various use cases we've heard from customers that highlight FME's unique ability for data integration with an emphasis on spatial as always. Uh, so yeah, before we get to those demos, uh, I'll open FME and uh, get started here. So I'll dive out of the presentation window and bear with me as I switch screens here. All right, so here we see FME Workbench, so the main component of FME Desktop. Uh, this is the application used to author data workflows in FME, and those are referred to as workspaces. So in the center of the canvas, uh, we place tools and build our workflows visually. FME provides a graphical user interface for all of this, allowing users to integrate without needing to code at all, unless you want to, in which case feel free to inject Python uh, or R as just an example. At the left is our navigator window, helps us organize components of our workspace. Uh, we can manage database, connections, web connections, and parameters for our workflows. At the bottom, we've got this visual preview window, which you'll see a little bit more in a minute, but this will help us look at the data as we create our, our workflow and sort of help us piece together our transformation. So an F FME workspace consists of three main components. Uh, the first is uh, generally a reader, which is used to extract the source data from wherever it resides. So if I simply drag and drop a CSV file onto the canvas. Uh, I can very quickly just add a CSV reader for this non-spatial demographic data. I can also run this already and start to uh, inspect the data that I'm working with. So here we've got some demographic data. I can do the same with spatial data. So for instance, uh, a shape file. I could just drag and drop that onto the canvas. And now I also have uh, a shape file with my census uh, or sorry, my, yes, census areas. So this is a, a location-based data. Next, we normally send data through a series of transformers to enrich and process it. A simple example would be an attribute manager. It's a very commonly used transformer to uh, modify schemas, uh, drop columns or attributes as we refer to them in FME. You can also perform uh, calculations on individual cells or rows as well using a combination of uh, text or arithmetic functions. A common uh, transformation to do after this would be to just join data sets. So I can just drop a feature joiner uh, transformer on the canvas here, connect up my data sources, and from within the parameters here, I can just pick and choose my primary keys to join my 
uh, data sets. And this takes care of, of geometry uh, as well. So if I run this, at this point, I'll have uh, a set of uh, census areas with the demographic data joined. So I've got population and some value of dwellings and so forth. At this point, uh, we typically use one or more writers to output our data at the end of the integration. This could be really whatever we want. Uh, for instance, Excel for a data-centric report, maybe PDF for a visual report, something like TDE or QVX for directly feeding BI tools like Tableau or Click. Uh, in this case, let's say we want to update our centralized SQL Server database. So let's plop down a SQL Server writer. I can just choose my connection, set my schema to automatic. I'll just let FME do the work for me. Let's name my table demographics, keep it simple. And now I'm ready to write to SQL Server. So at this point, the integration is done and we could run it manually here in this environment. Uh, generally though, typically our users would publish this kind of workflow to FME Server at this point to take advantage of one-click services and automations. So we can do this by following the steps in the publishing wizard, just from FME Desktop here. Uh, and essentially just save this workspace up to our FME Server repository where we can take advantage of all the tools there. So let's dive over to FME Server just to give an overview of that. Let's hop over to my homepage here. So here's the homepage for my FME Server instance. Uh, we can see on the left all the tools available to us. Uh, we have tools like running a workspace, uh, job auditing, automation schedules. We can manage our repositories, which hold our workspaces, as well as resources, which might hold data and we have admin tools uh, as well. With the Run Workspace tool, we have the ability to run jobs with the click of a button. And we also have access to published parameters here so we can feed data into our workspaces at runtime. This could also be linked to sources or outputs so we could upload a, a file at runtime to, to be used in this workspace for data transformation. Another tool I want to highlight is the automations tool, which is our brand new uh, sort of responsive and notifications based uh, GUI tool. Uh, it sort of wraps up all these sort of lower level functions that we used to be able to do, used to have to do to link up all these workspaces and workflows, brings it to a visual uh, tool, much like FME Workbench. So if you can use Workbench, chances are automations will be easy for you. So the first kind of automation many of our users build is just a scheduled job. So I can show that quickly here where we have a trigger. Uh, we can choose a schedule. We can repeat on any interval we want, really. Let's say we want to repeat every day. And let's run this. Sure, why not? Let's run it now, every day. It's going to start immediately. That's great. From this schedule, we choose uh, an action. Typically, this is running a workspace. So our schedule is just going to run a workspace. I can choose whatever workspace I want. And then uh, I can choose an external action, maybe sending an email with the results uh, or triggering another topic in FME Server or another workspace. The possibilities are really endless. Uh, and what else do we have? Yeah, uploading files as well. So yeah, great, great new tool. Yeah, and I think um, it's interesting to point out too, Nathan, that you've shown all of the these the user interfaces that are um, that are used here, and at no point did you have to start coding. So um, those of you who are listening, you know, coding isn't is not something that you need to do with FME. If you want to extend with R or Python, you can, but it's not part of your regular day to day workflow that's required. All right, that's totally right. And of course, there's a whole lot more power and flexibility in our uh, shipped tools than I've just shown. Um, we'll start to explore some of this as I move on. So that's kind of the FME platform uh, in a nutshell. So let's move on to the scenarios now. Uh, the first one that I'd like to show you is uh, the uh, scenario of catchment areas, which I think Aaron referred to uh, earlier. Uh, so the first scenario I've sh I have shows a few capabilities of FME beyond simply integration. 
It does involve some data prep and spatial analysis. It's really uh, your choice what tools you use for those processes. For example, we're not trying to replace a GIS application or an analytics engine. Our main goal is really to help you get the data wherever you need it. If that means performing automation or performing some spatial analysis as well, then we're happy to help you move the data that final step if our tool is up for the job. And that's kind of what I'm going to show here. Uh, and this goes for your BI tool of choice as well. So as you can see here, I'll be showing click in the following demos. Oops, I've just been timed out. But we can also integrate with uh, Tableau, Power BI, Looker, and others. It all boils down to you know, using FME to get the data where you want it. So let me log back in here and we can just browse this dashboard a little bit more in depth. So yeah, let's look at this example of catchment areas using FME and Click. So this example was built using New York State Open Data, and it displays continuous driving time distances in minutes from all locations in this area of interest to the nearest medical clinic. Driving times are indicated in minutes. And since I've enriched the underlying data with demographics from the US Census Bureau, I can actually drill down and look at information about population and healthcare coverage uh, for a given area. So uh, red here is actually a very short driving time. So right in the downtown sort of core here of, of Syracuse, it's only a few minutes to the nearest clinic and you can see all, how many, sort of what the density of clinics is in this area. If we move out, we notice some kind of cool spots where you know it's a half an hour-ish or more to get to a clinic and I can drill down to this uh, area as well and I'm given some data from our demographic and rich data just concerning household income population without uh, health or with health and health insurance and the possibilities here are you know endless as well Can just up to the data you have so I think for this kind of visualization uh, the spatial relationships between the data unlock more insights than uh, traditional uh, joins might loan. Uh, visually, we're able to make brand new associations and insights based on location alone. Underpinning this map and dashboard is a simple data integration and analysis question that we can tackle in FME. So at any given location, how long do I have to drive to get to the nearest clinic? And the insights that come after, the, after uh, answer another question, where do we need more clinics or more outreach? So you can imagine the types of data sets needed to accomplish this and the integration as well. Uh, for instance, with traffic data, road infrastructure data, clinic location data, demographics, point of interest data. In FME, we can integrate and blend these and even in some cases procure these such as through open data portals or APIs like the US Census Bureau API. So as far as FME is concerned, a few steps were required to reach this end visualization. Uh, the first steps were to gather, integrate, and validate the raw data. So I'll jump over to an FME workspace and just at a high level kind of explain this process. So we gathered the data sets. This include clinics, points of interest, uh, which happen to be in a CSV. We also grabbed a, a road network for New York State. This is also open data and I have it in a spatial database. So in this workflow, I'm really validating the connectivity of this road network. I need to know that all my road segments connect. Uh, I need to do a little bit of calculation to find out how long it takes to travel along each segment of road. This is based on the length of road uh, as well as the speed limit uh, noted for that road, as well as a little bit of extra just to sort of make it a real world. You're not always traveling at the, at the speed limit necessarily. <laughs> Um, and then we also need to kind of match that with the clinic data. We need to make sure our clinics are snapped to that network to, to uh, be able to perform our analysis. So this is really the validation, cleaning the data, making sure it all lines up so we can uh, move along to the next step. The next step is building something useful out of this uh, raw data. So we're going to integrate these raw inputs that are now validated it is something useful, forming relationships between the data sets and building a final uh, data set that can be actually visualized in the end. So we're in this workspace uh, reading both of those input data sets again, but now cleaned and validated. 
Uh, we're merging them to find out the network relationships and finding the cost for each uh, travel time from each location to each nearest clinic. And then we're going to build a, a model of points for each location in our area of interest, which hold that information of how far is it from here to the nearest clinic. Finally, we'll enrich this data set with our demographic data and actually form a visual output. Uh, this is actually split off into another separate workspace, uh, which I can show here, where our input is this rather large data set, which looks like a line network here in our visual preview, but it's really a lot of points which hold that information of how far is it to the nearest clinic. We're going to uh, do a little bit of intermediary raster interpolation here to make that continuous. We're going to generate our drive time areas so that we can actually make you know, a useful visual case out of this. So now we have polygons rather than you know, a combination of points or, or a raster image. Uh, we'll streamline that, enrich it, and output to uh, QVX formats, which in this case just feed into click really easily. This could be a TDE for Tableau, could be Excel or something uh, similar for Power BI. It really just depends on your tool. I've used click for, for this uh, demo. So that's a catchment area kind of scenario. The next area scenario I want to kind of fly through at a high level is related to uh, the real-time uh, use case that Aaron highlighted earlier. So yeah, I've been logged out again. This happens pretty regularly. Let me just slide back in. So here we got another dashboard. This is just showing uh, current locations of vehicles in the field. It could be really any vehicle or any uh, asset. In this case, it's uh, buses in the Portland transit system. So for this dashboard, uh, FME server is going to shine a little bit even more than FME desktop. Um, the data input for this dashboard is actually FME server streaming data back to Click. So if I went to my data data source for this, it would actually you would actually just see uh, a URL from FME server, and I'll, I'll show you how this works from from the FME server standpoint as well. So let's jump over to FME Server. I'm in Run the Warner Workspace tool, and I can just see that in my repository, I've got a workspace called Portland Transit. So this is the workspace that feeds that dashboard. I can actually view it here in FME Server. It's fairly simple. I'm connecting to the Portland Transit API. Uh, I'm getting locations, current locations of buses, I'm doing a little bit of JSON transformation, and creating points and setting their real world location. After this, I'm writing to QVX, um, but through the power of FME server, I have uh, created a URL, essentially a webhook, so that when I put this URL into the data source for Click, it tells Click that every time I'm going to load that source into my VI dashboard, it's going to run that workspace, this workspace in FME server, and get the latest data. So here's my current dashboard. If I go over to my Click uh, Management Console, I can actually refresh this dashboard and hopefully we'll see those points kind of move and come back to life. So if I reload this dashboard, FME Server is running that workspace in the background and it's just streamed back the most current location uh, for those buses in Portland. So from, from the click standpoint, we can set this to run on a schedule or we can reload it manually. Uh, this turns into a, a near real-time uh, location uh, dashboard. So the final uh, demo I have for you here uh, is more of a, a binning scenario or a binning exercise. It's also a heavy spatial component. Uh, and this dashboard is looking at uh, sort of how many crimes happen in each neighborhood in, in Portland. It's more of a traditional data integration uh, workflow. Um, so this dashboard just contains information about the, the kinds of crimes and total crimes per neighborhood, as well as a little bit of demographic information. Just an example of the kind of dashboard you could create for, for this uh, data set. And from the FME side, I'll walk you through that 
uh, integration process. So it's a workspace that combines neighborhood areas, demographic data, and location-based crime information into sort of a usable format that we're going to output to QVX uh, for rapid development of that spatial click dashboard. Uh, our, our sources here are GeoJSON and a Postgres non-spatial. So we've got kind of in that intro, similar to that intro, we've got kind of neighborhood uh, areas and we've also got demographic uh, data. These are, are related, so I'm going to join them based on a, a shared key. So at the end of this transformer, I've got my uh, neighborhoods with their, dem their demographic data associated. Um, I have crime data for the whole state of Portland, but I'm only interested in a certain area. So I'm going to feed all of these areas into my crime data reader, which I've, I've got in this uh, bookmark here. So I'm just going to read the points of data for crimes that I'm interested in, just in this area. So you can see about 50,000 uh, reports of crime throughout Portland. The next transformer is kind of the crux of this workspace. Uh, and it's a spatial one. It's the point on area overlayer. It's really just answering the question, what crime reports fall into which neighborhoods? And the answer is going to come out in this uh, area data set. Uh, so now for each data set, after FME has related uh, points inside their areas, I now have information concerning demographics as well as what kinds of crimes happened in each neighborhood. So I've got offenses, and I can see, for instance, um, how many offenses happened in the neighborhood for this given time. The final step here is to join, is to sort of clean and aggregate that data uh, so that I have lists such as how many motor vehicle thefts happened in this particular neighborhood. So now I can start to gain some insights from all of this integration work I've done up to this point. And we output to QVX so that Literally, we can just drag and drop that data set into Click and build this quick dashboard. Great, so that's about it for the scenarios we've got for you today. Um, I just want to highlight too, um, so you saw throughout those demos, uh, FME transforming uh, your data. Uh, bear with me one second, I'm just gonna grab my uh, presenter notes back up here as well. <clears throat> so our library of transformers enables you to integrate your data to suit the best fit for purpose applications, formats, and standards that you've chosen. For me, it was Click, but it could be a, a wide range of systems. This increases the value of data by making it usable where, when, and how it's needed. For instance, in FME, we can restructure, filter, and calculate, uh, as, well, as well as many other uh, processes. Uh, for instance, in the catchment areas demo, I used some statistics and mathematical expression tools to calculate travel times for individual road segments. I also used interpolation or estimation uh, of missing data for the continuous drive time visualization feature. The data validation capabilities in FME provide high quality assurance. And you saw when I was validating that road network, I had to validate, validate it against a series of tests as well as other data sets to ensure the connectivity of the road network uh, and its geometry. As well, you can easily expand your workflows to include needed new data sources as they become available or change up your workflow as requirements change. Workspaces are easily modified and iterated, including with versioning. Uh, for instance, in the catchment demo, even though it was a relatively small area of interest in New York State, the data integration steps that I used turned into somewhat of a big data problem as I realized that uh, my fine-grained road network data set, when matched with the clinics, ballooned into about 25 million rows along this process. And I needed to maximize performance, so I split my larger workspace into modules uh, and actually published certain components to FME Server, paralyzed the, parallelized the processing on multiple engines, FME Server engines, to achieve uh, faster results. So how do we help our customers achieve their goals? 
Here at SAFE, we believe in fully supporting our customers as they solve their challenges. We provide free resources so customers can gain the greatest return on their investment. For instance, all of our training is free and available online in both on-demand and live instructor-led formats. We have an enormous wealth of articles in our knowledge base from beginner how-tos to in-depth technical walkthroughs. And our very active forum is a great way to find crowdsourced solutions to really any question about like the entire platform. If you can't find what you're looking for, our live chat is staffed by technology experts who are super knowledgeable about FME. Chances are they can answer your question, or if not, they will happily point you in the right direction at the very least. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Aaron and Nick to wrap up here. Thanks, Nathan, that was awesome. Um, yeah, so we mentioned earlier, we have over 10,000 organizations that trust our tools to perform their data integration workflows. So if you'd like to see more use cases and get ideas of how you could use location information in your organization, you can take a look at our customer gallery at safe.com slash customers. And from there, you can also take a look at some of the examples I talked about today um, and read more in depth, you know, in blog posts and things like that to get more ideas and inspiration. Um, so now I'll wrap it up. we'll wrap it up with Nick. Awesome, thanks Aaron and Nathan. And thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, we do still have more time, we've ended a bit early, so we, we can give you back some time in your day. Um, but feel free to stick around for a few minutes. We'll go through a couple of uh, the questions that have come through. I know Laura and Sienna have been busy answering your questions as they've been coming in, um, but perhaps we'll, uh, we'll take a look now and see if there's any we wanna highlight on the call. In the meantime, uh, if you don't have uh, FME already, please feel free to visit our website at safe.com to get your free trial. If you need longer, we offer a 60-day trial, but if you need longer duration trial uh, for a proof of concept, please get in touch with us. We're always happy to help uh, with any sort of project that you're working on. We really, as, as Nathan and Aaron have said, want to help you be successful in the projects that you're working on. And remember that Safe Software delivers FME. We're the data integration platform with the best support for location data worldwide. So we really think we're in a great position to help you with your location data challenges. So with that, uh, again, thank you so much. Feel free to uh, take the next 20 minutes back in your day. Um, alternatively, as I said, we'll stick around and answer a couple of questions. Nathan, do you have any that you want to uh, tackle here? Well, I just see that someone's asking about connecting to uh, ArcGIS Online as they don't have uh, publicly shared data. Uh, we definitely have connectors for ArcGIS Online and, and a couple different ways to authenticate uh, based on your organizational needs. And we're definitely always trying to improve those connectors as well. Um, so yes, and we have support for a wide variety of web, different web connections in FME as well. So uh, those are both shipped and we also have the FME hub where we have a lot of sort of custom or edge based uh, connectivity. So be sure to check those out as well. Great. Looks like we've got a couple more that have come in. Hey guys, it's just Stephanie here. Um, I've been reading some of the questions on the back end, and I thought one interesting one was, what's the advantage of automating workflows using FME server rather than just using some of the built-in functionality in, say, like Click and the BI tools? Right. So in FME server, we have so in Click, you can essentially, or other BI tools, I think the, the standard automation tool would be scheduling. Um, in FME Server, we have a, a wider range of capabilities there in, in terms of, of triggers. Um, this could be uh, event-based. You could have other systems communicate with FME Server to trigger workflows. These could also be chained together. Um, we do schedules as well, of course. But I think uh, sort of event-based triggers open up a, a broader range of, of automation capabilities. Mm -hmm. since, since FME Server uh, has a fully, uh, fully fledged REST API as well, the sort of possibilities for communicating between systems is, is really broadly opened up. Mm -hmm. And then there was another question, wondering if there's anything essential in input data I don't know if we need maybe more context for that, but um, I don't know, anything critical in the data that you're using to kind of get the outputs that you did? Right, um, not especially, I wouldn't say. I mean, 
most of the data that I used for all of those uh, demos were uh, open data sources. Um, often they were not of the highest quality, so that's kind of why I highlighted uh, you saw the need, the need and, the, and the use case for validating and cleaning data in FME. Um, and they're a little bit uh, disparate as well, so that's that's where the integration comes in. So I've got a little bit of a little bit of data here concerning maybe locations of clinics, and I've got this uh, road network. How can I merge these? How can I draw more insights out of these? Um, and since FME can manipulate data in pretty much whatever way you want, uh, your input is, uh, you know, the structure of the input or the source format of the input is not really that important. Mm -hmm. um, okay, maybe just a couple more. Nick, maybe you can speak to this one. Do, do uh, users need a specific license to use FME Server? Yeah, good question. Um, FME Server, um, we uh, sell the initial product itself. So when you when you um, license FME Server, you buy the first engine essentially to be able to uh, access the interface, set up your instance, process your initial jobs, and then as you need more processing power, you have the option to buy additional engines. And Nathan kind of hinted at that in a couple of his demos. If you want to do things like run parallel processes, you can purchase additional engines so you have multiple things running at once. Um, and that's how we, you can license FME Server. Um, I realized, and I saw a comment come through just a couple minutes ago as well, um, that I mentioned, um, you know, certainly if you need FME Server or FME desktop for a trial or any proof of concepts to contact us the best way to do that is to send us an email you can reach our customer engagement team at sales at safe.com alternatively if you jump on live chat our tech experts can certainly connect you um, with members of our customer engagement team as well but they're probably the best positioned uh, to give you guys a hand with that mm -hmm. cool okay maybe just a couple more this one just came in it's kind of interesting is it possible to track vehicles using FME? Yeah, for sure. So um, in the examples we showed here, uh, it was I was just connecting to an API that had the, uh, re the real-time locations of, of, of vehicles. But we've also had customers do things like um, streaming real-time vehicle locations via WebSockets to FME server. Um, it really depends on sort of what the infrastructure is in your in your in your vehicles and how they can report their location. But if it's WebSockets, if it's uh, uh, through a REST API or something like this, uh, FME Server can be hooked up to listen to these streams of data, uh, trigger workflows to process them, and either you know shoot that to a dashboard, shoot that to a centralized uh, database to keep up to date. Um, it's really up to you. Cool. Well, I think that we can probably leave it there. And then if we didn't get to anyone's questions, like you guys said, we do offer live chat and we're on Twitter, um, all the social networks. So there's no uh, limitation to how you can contact us to get your questions answered. But yeah, I think we can probably close it down there. But thank you guys so much. Yes, thanks, thanks very so much, much, everybody. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.